Hi, welcome back to another video for this button game that we're making. In the previous video, we had a save game button, which was able to take all of our states of our buttons and put them into a JSON object. In this video, we're going to do the load game button. So to make this load game button work, we're going to have to create another item in our database access object. So let's get started there. So I'm here in the code for the game. Let's go to the uh, game DAO or games DAO. And you can see that we've implemented save game and we have not implemented load game. So that's the goal here. So since these both are going to have a lot of similar code, I'm going to copy and paste over top of the uh, load game. So we can use a few things here and delete a few things. So the first thing that we can change is the uh, query string. The connection string can probably just stay the same. But the query string should be select star from the table, dbo games. So I'm going to modify the query string. I want to get just the first result, or in this case, the last result that was in the database. And then I want to, uh, so I'm gonna select the top one. And then at the other end of the query, I say order by ID, and put it in descending order. So the biggest ID number will be at the top of the list. So I'll just get the latest ID number. So this will only select one row. So we're not going to have to use any parameters because we're not specifying any inserts in this command. So I'm gonna delete that row. Now in here, we're going to see we have an execute non-query. That's probably not gonna work, so I'm gonna delete that. We can leave the others. Also, let's go and change the return type now. So when we have load game, we expect this thing to come back as a game object. So the game object holds the uh, status here. Notice also it's complaining that it says not all paths return a value. So let's insert a new game object. We just have to create one and we will use the constructor that says, hey, make one for me. And I didn't create a defaulted constructor, so I have to add some parameters. So let's do one and an empty string. So now we have a new game object. We will fill that game object with things from the database. Now we need to return this at the end of the uh, function here. So let's click on this bracket and follow it all the way down. So that is the end. So just before the end, we're gonna do return game object. Okay, so now that error goes away. All right, so inside the try, we're gonna need a new SQL data reader object, it's called. So let's call it SQL data reader. And then we need this SQL command and dot execute reader. So that will give us a, an object that has uh, read from the database. So then we, uh, we're going to start a while loop. So this is standard functions when you do database reading. So while we can read from the SQL data reader object, while there's a new line or new row you might call it, we're going to assign that then to our game object. So game object ID is the first thing and we need to get from position zero. So that's column zero. And then in the database, we're gonna have column one as well. So we'll have SQL uh, reader for get string the next time and we'll stick that into the game object dot JSON string. So this should just read one row, but it's set up to read multiple rows even though we have a while loop here. Okay, so as I look at the code here, before I finally move on, I notice I have an error. So the open statement must be executed before we try to do a read. So I'm gonna just cut that out and move it up one line and paste it. Okay, I'm gonna save that and then we're ready to move on. Now it seems like there's one thing that is not really necessary here. I have this success value I can take out and then down on the next row, 76, it looks like we can eliminate it there as well. So this should return to us a string and an ID and it'll come in the form of this uh, game object. Now, to be able to use that, let's switch back to the button controller. So we are going to have a, another function that will be a lot like the onSave function. So I'm gonna copy and paste this and call it onLoad. So onLoad is the new guy. So we're gonna to connect to the database service we are going to, instead of serialize an object, we're going to deserialize the object. So let's, uh, let's modify that a little bit. So I'm going to highlight a section here and just delete it. 
So we're going to take a game object and get it directly from the DAO, which is going to get us load game, and it has no parameter in it. Okay, so that should hopefully pull back a game object for us. Now, we're going to take this uh, game object and actually translate it into the buttons. So buttons is the game state, and we want to be able to get it from the game object. So it would be nice if we could just say game object, get it from the JSON string, and be done. And that obviously doesn't work. We've got ourselves a string, and we're trying to put it into a button list. So what we need to do is deserialize this thing. So it is a string that has all the contents we need, but it just needs to be kind of unpacked. So we're going to use this same JSON convert method here, or this, this class. So I'm going to paste this in here, and let's see if there's anything else that we can use. We can see deserialized object. That's the first thing that comes up. Perfect. Now, if we could just put parentheses around that and have the whole thing work, that would be wonderful. But of course, it's never that easy. So what's the error? It says, I cannot com implicitly convert an object to a string. Are you missing a cast? So what's missing then is to translate this string into a list of buttons. That's what this thing is. So if you look at the top here, list of button model is the data type. So if I were to just copy that, we could borrow that and put it down inside a couple of angle brackets. So I'm going to paste it in there and say, hey, that buttons is this data type, and so expect to translate it that way. All right, so now we're ready to send these buttons off to the next view. So let's go look at the view called uh, results. And the results view was set up in the last video, and we were expecting a tuple or a tuple with a bool and a string value. So let's go back and see if we can make that happen. We created something like that up here at the top, so I'm going to copy and paste. We're almost there. So the results tuple is going to be a success. Uh, I guess we'll put just true for default. And the JSON serialized buttons, that should work. And let's see, we're going to send off the results tuple into the uh, next view. Did we do the same thing up here? We did not. So let's, instead of success, let's send that as results tuple. My goodness. That's a lot of code. I hope we did it right. Let's test it out and run it. Okay, so let's put in the correct URL. We get to the main window here, and I'm going to choose load game. And it does say success, so it loaded something. Let's go back and refresh the page, and you can see that the previous game that I had saved was all red. So you can test it out. You can like try a pattern, push save game. There's one more thing I'd like to add is a return of maybe a link. So after we've gotten the results on the screen, let's put in a, a HTML action link here. So let's see if I type that right in. Action link it is, yes. So the things we need to put in here, first of all, the uh, text. So this is return. Uh, so you can put anything you want there. And then the uh, next thing is the uh, index, which is the actual method. And then finally the controller, which is called the button controller. So they're a little bit backwards in their order, but that should work. Let's see if that helps us out. Okay, so I got this same thing again. Let's choose load game. And let's see what happens here. We get ourselves a success. And now when I click return, you can see that the uh, previous uh, version of the game is loaded. So let's check to see if we can do flags. I'm going to do save the game. Let's return and let's try load game and return. And it does seem to catch everything. So we've got ourselves an exact version of how you can serialize an entire game board, save it into a database and restore it. Now, some probably some better things you could do is instead of just having a load game where it just does one game, you could may maybe make a page that shows a list of all saved games and then the user can select one by its ID number. So that would be a great solution. But this will get you started if you're trying to create a way to save and uh, restore serialized data.